I think that I'm, I'm a fresco painter. You know, they're, that's a broad term though. You know, there are fresco painters. They're, they're the Michelangelo's of the world. And, uh, and there are people who are, you know, just, just beginning um, to learn the trade. And I, I feel like I'm, I think I, I'm over the doorstep, uh, but it's, it's, I can see a long tunnel. There's a lot more that I have to learn and do. Some of the earliest examples that we have, I guess the, the actual systematic use of fresco would go back to the Minoans you know, thousands of years ago. Uh, the Romans used it, you know, they would, they would, they would uh, decorate their, their villas, um, their palaces with fresco and things like that. The Renaissance, uh, frescoes flourished during the Renaissance. Patrons had lots of money. Uh, the church, um, princes, whomever it may be, they would uh, hire artists for these big projects. And sometimes, the, a lot of times, the, the murals would be statements about those very powerful people or institutions. It's, it was used and still is used here or there, you know, in Europe and, and even in the United States in, in, in small places, in small amounts. Uh, but in the United States, it was used during the Great Depression. But after the Great Depression, after the WPA projects uh, were no longer funded, the, the technique, which takes a lot of resources, naturally kind of fell by the wayside. And here we are now, you know, trying to dabble in it again and see if we can't. Uh, start the engine up one more time. I want to make, I would like to see how I can make the technique more contemporary, more accessible. The, the murals, the, those murals are, they're, they're grueling. That wall is a lot of work, a lot of material. It's not so forgiving. You know, how can you take that basic process of uh, pigment being locked into a plaster surface? How can you take that and do something new with it so that it, it can exist, you know, in everyday use for, for artists, where they don't have to undertake a mammoth project. So, um, little tile, you know, big uh, collages of small frescoes, whatever it might be, but there's, there's, there are some things that I think, some fertile ground for that technique still. Oh, the image to me, oh, means a lot of work. <laughs> in terms of the medium, obviously, Van Meter is a building that could have held a fresco painting, you know, it was built in the early 1900s, uh, at the same time that other um, buildings in the United States were being painted by, with frescoes. And I like that it looks back, you know, the fresco harks back to Van Meter's history even a little bit. I think that the scale of the figures um, were also, they're definitely, I wouldn't say influenced by Van, Van Meter, but they seemed fitting to me. You know, I liked that there was a railing just a handful of feet behind the mural. It forces people up close to that mural, and they're, they're getting a chance to inspect it and see what a fresco is up, up close. You know, it's not a ceiling that's where there's 50 feet between them and all that air. You know, they can get up and say, oh, well, well look at that little scar, it's in, and it's a giornata, you know, and what, why in the world is, is that there? And then they realize that maybe it was pieced together like a puzzle, and, um, and the process maybe reveals itself a little bit to them. Uh, so I like that. In, in that regard, I think it, it definitely did. Uh, it was influenced. I also think that just the scale of the mural and the color and, and some of those, those, uh, those choices on my part were, were tied to how I felt the second floor needed a bit more weight, visual weight. You know, when I would walk in Van Meter, you'd see these beautiful staircases and, um, and there's the, the wonderful railing up top. And then there was just a, a big barren white wall behind that. And I, I thought it would be great if there was something up there that would invite the viewer up those stairs and um, and so I hoped that my painting would would reach above the railing and you could see it from the first floor which you can and people might be like wow there's there's something for us to see up there we should go inspect that and and activate that second floor you know I you know at the very least I hope that that it makes them think and wonder you know I, I hope it makes them feel uh, part of that image you know the monumental scale of the figures was I, I was trying to to echo the, echo the physical nature of that material, you know, and, and, and what what that monumental mural is. Like, how can you stir that that response to the physical form in a viewer? You know, they're they're confronted by it, and so I I hope that that they feel something. I hope they question, and hope that maybe they want to know more about the process. Maybe they want to know more about how the image came about. Who influenced the image? How do they feel the image? What do they feel the image means? 
you know, I think if anything, just make them think and, um, and, and sense. I have watched people interact with it uh, while I was painting it. They seem very, very interested. You know, to see somebody making something is, is fascinating these days. You know, sometimes we get everything prepackaged and it's, it's, it's glossy and painted perfectly and, and nobody knows how it got to that state. Um, this is a, a chance for people to see it building out from the wall. And I've, I've had little, uh, little opportunities for people in the community to come and even paint a little portion of it. You know, and of course it wouldn't stay, I'd scrape it, but just a chance for them to kind of move a brush on a piece of wet plaster on the mural and watching how people respond to the act of painting a fresco. That, that really grabs them, which I, I, I relate to that because it grabbed me. You know, it's, it's about these big murals that I've seen in my life, but it's also about just how I, how I experienced the making of, of those frescoes, those little ones that I was doing, and how, how active the medium is, how it, how it responds to your brush. And it's amazing to me to watch people who have no art experience and no history with art uh, coming up and just putting the brush in. And once they see the water kind of get sucked into the wall, they're like, oh, not expecting it in, and, they're, and they get sucked right in too, you know? You know, one thing I liked about painting the fresco, as hard as it was to, to, to begin work at eight in the morning on one day and to end it at 6 a.m. the next day, as hard as that was, there's something really beautiful and peaceful about painting late at night on scaffolding by yourself. Uh, it's just you and this big, huge image. You know, the lights are dim. And I could look out a window and see what the weather's like out there at night, and knowing that everybody else is kind of asleep, but it's just me and the wall there. I really I think that of all the things that I'm going to reflect on as I, as I age and get older, I'm gonna, I'm gonna probably miss that a little bit. I, I did like that, that, that solitude. You know? Maybe it's just, what is it about that that I like so much? I'm not sure. It's peaceful. You know, it's, it's sort of like meditative in some, in some regards too. I mean, honored, obviously, to have been given the opportunity to put something in a space for that amount of time. Um, and you know, it's, it, is, it is exciting and touching to think about the fact that you know, maybe I'll be long gone and people will still have some, there's some residue of me there. You know, they're gonna wonder, maybe they'll, it, it'll be a student, maybe it'll be a couple students who are curious about art or the fresco process and they'll, they'll dig a little bit and find, oh, well, this guy was a professor here or whatnot. Um, but I, I think about tomorrow <laughs> in the short term, not so much uh, 100 years down the line. <laughs>